what impact has the Russian perception of NATO's actions in Libya had on the worldwide response to the situation in Syria? That indeed is a question we get asked quite frequently here. And it's clear that the, the Libya experience was uh, one that caused new frictions in the NATO-Russia relationship. And it has both directly and indirectly affected the international community's capacity to deal with the Syrian crisis. In the case of Libya, of course, we were able to see the United Nations Security Council come together and agree on a uh, resolution providing a mandate for outside military intervention aimed at protecting the Libyan people against the, uh, the murderous attacks by the Qaddafi regime. This involved not just a no-fly zone, but uh, active military actions to uh, stop the regime from attacking its own people. And that helped level the playing field and ultimately led to the downfall of the Qaddafi regime. Although Russia abstained on that resolution, uh, it's clear that the, the Russian leadership today has deep uh, regrets about that decision and seems very uh, uh, determined not to support anything in the UN Security Council that could uh, open the door to outside military intervention. Of course, this is somewhat uh, ironic given the fact that NATO is not calling for military intervention or planning for military intervention. The situation inside Syria, while very dramatic and of course has caused the deaths of more than 80,000 uh, Sy Syrian people, is at the same time very different in many respects from Libya. First of all, there is not the same regional support for outside intervention that we saw in Libya. Even within Syria, uh, there is no agreement among the opposition and resistance forces about the desirability of outside military intervention. And everyone is still hoping, despite the brutality of the war now as it passes two years, there's still hope that a political solution can be found. And that's where all the NATO allies stand. And they are hopeful that the upcoming efforts to reconvene the Geneva Conference uh, based on the UN and Arab League plan uh, will gain some uh, momentum and that we could see an early agreement among representatives of the regime and representatives of the uh, opposition on a mutually acceptable transitional government that could pave the way for uh, elections and, and the uh, transfer of power to a legitimate uh, leadership in Syria that can unite all the different uh, elements of the population and uh, get us past the uh, period in which the Assad regime has been waging an all-out war against its own people in order to preserve its own power uh, in the region and in the country. Uh, but uh, clearly, uh, despite the efforts of the United States, France, the UK and others to bring Russia to a common approach. Uh, we still have a long way to go, uh, but we take some encouragement from the, uh, the positive uh, results of U.S. Secretary of State Kerry's visit to Moscow a few weeks ago, which have at least set in motion the plans for uh, resumption of the Geneva talks. Uh, but no one can be optimistic uh, given the uh, readiness of the Assad regime to use ballistic missiles against its own people to uh, carry out massive atrocities against civilians, and at least based on some reports, to be even considering the use of uh, chem chemical weapons. Uh, but political solution is the goal, uh, and despite Russian efforts to prevent NATO from doing, again, what it did in Libya, that is not where NATO would like to go. We would like to see a political solution.